Hello guys, hello guys, hello guys, and welcome to another one of my Fortnite videos, 270 days of logging in. This is recorded before we have the perk reroll system, making it a bit of a cool update for me to make because we don't really know what is going to be happening with the reroll system, and I'm looking very much forward to it. What I have at the time of this recording is a decent amount of evolution materials that will allow me to focus on new items that we will see in 4.0 that should be coming in a few days so that I can pick the cool new interesting things and play with them, toy around with them pretty much like early in the process. So I'm looking very much forward to that. I'm thinking the first thing I want to go to is my survivor squads, the core of my power, that which gives me a home base power of 111, have a few capped squads. I have a pretty decent EMT squad, it's something that I can choose to go more into. I have matching personalities and a mythic lead. I have my fire team alpha, which is where I have my only legendary lead survivor. So it is the main thing I want to change in the game. It is the only thing I really need. Don't have fully matching personalities there. My gadgeteer squad is also decent, have my mythic lead. I'm missing one matching personality, but I don't really have like set bonuses well up and running. But it is also something that I'm pretty close to having where I want it in the game. Moving just a little bit forward here to the Corps of Engineering, my tech squad that I'm really really excited about. It is capped. I have decent bonuses for like some of the survivors. I do want to have a bonus option going for these stuff here, the ability damage bonus. So I do hope to make a replacement at some point, but I'm but I'm capped at 1236 tech score points for this squad here, so that is really 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 nice. My training team is where I have my epics. I have two epic survivors in here, and I don't really have any legendaries that match up with my mythic lead, so it is definitely a place where I have a lot of room for improvement. Another really cool squad that I'm happy with here is my close assault squad. This was the first squad I capped my offense score here. So that adds to the damage I deal with melee weapons and with ranged weapons. Pretty hyped about having that capped as well really. Moving down here to the scouting party, I have my mythic lead. I have one matching personality legendary survivor. The rest are not really matching up with anything, so that's pretty unsatisfying. And in my think tank, I have a mythic lead. I have some good survivors, but I'm missing three with a matching personality. So this is tech. It's the most important score for me. So I would really like to get this up and running more than the others. So hopefully I'm going to roll some more dreamers soon that are legendary. But... That guys was my survivors, the cool power part of the game really and now it is time to dig into the armory and check out my heroes and heroes are pretty cool, fun and amazing to level up because you don't need to craft them each and every time. I have three epics favorited because well they are things I want to be looking into at some point in the game or evolve because I'm missing them as legendaries but besides that I have a pretty decent like collection of high tier heroes. I try to get them to 130 when time and resources allow for it because it's a one-off thing unlike weapons. So it's really nice to get those up there. But we've been getting so many cool new heroes in the game that it has been really hard for me to keep up with all the new heroes. So as you can see as we move a, like a little bit further down I have only a 125 heavy base Kyle, a 124 Harvester Sarah, only a 106 Bulletstorm Jonesy and a 103 of the new Outlander, so there are, like, I have been a bit down on resources, and as you saw at the start of the video, I could get these to 130 now, I do have the resources for it, but we're getting 4.0, right around the corner, new soldier abilities, like, so much new coming that I really want to be able to look into that and try that out before upping the ones that I have already a little bit more. The main reason why I'm just browsing quickly through these is like if you're wondering what I have also in terms of the things I can do with tactical options, what I may be looking into later because some of these heroes are really really cool. Some of them are just reskins of other things that I have. Some like Blitz and Kyle should just be put into my collection book but I kind of like to have the option of playing with him. Pretty hyped about having Dimmock and Dragon Scorch. I also have Sarah Hotsep. So those are definitely ninjas I'm going to be looking into because they're freaking awesome. I just really haven't had the time and resources to dedicate some time into properly testing them out and I do really like doing that. Powerbase Nox is another such hero that I recently acquired and fluxed up. 
So yeah, it's something I want to look into, but it's going to be like 360,000 hero experience points and I want to put some hours into it before like really getting a good feel about those heroes. So they're here and they are definitely going to be looked into, but we've just been getting so many cool, fun and amazing things in the game that I just haven't had time for it. Also have Thunderstrike Scorch that I wanted to test out with Harvester Sarah, but time really, yeah. And the rest here is pretty much just junk and transformation fodder. And just for reference, if you are interested, we can see the amount of goodies you get for recycling these. 335,000 hero experience points and 200 pure drops of rain for rain for one power level 130 hero. Let's just try to see what it adds up to if we select them all. Just for reference to, I don't know, there are a lot of things here I can't select, so that's a bit weird, but it's probably related to founders and events, so that stuff is, and collection books, so yeah, that stuff is, is locked. Can't really include that in the batch, but it adds up to more than 5 million hero experience points and almost 3,000 pure drops of rain, so... And that is a decent portion of what I've put in there, but I guess you can see the, the collection of heroes that I have and I can retire alone adds up to millions of hero experience points and thousands of pure drops of rain. So, like, a lot of time has gone into that collection even though it isn't as flashy as I would like it to be. If we go into my ranged weapon schematics, I only have three 130s because I learned a little late that 130 is a bad thing to do. It's pretty cool for explosive weapons because they go bright core and bright core is pretty common compared to sunbeam. So yeah, I have two sunbeam weapons and I really regret getting them there because I would rather just have had them as shadow shot. I don't miss like having the additional damage on my 106 weapons. So moving forward, I will focus on, on the 106 tier until they change the drop rate of of Sunbeam in the game because it's, it's just way too rare right now for like what I want it to be to have a cool casual gameplay. I have a decent amount of like mediocre power leveled weapons because I wanted to test them out or I've been asked to like craft some for people and it has been pretty cheap to just get them to 58 or 82 so sometimes I do that. And I'm just running through my legendary ranged weapon schematics here. I have a huge amount of them and as I said in the start of the video, we're getting weapon reroll options soon. And the main reason why I have so many duplicate legendaries is because I didn't really know if we were going to get this and I don't really know how it is going to work. Well, I need to retire or sacrifice one legendary weapon to boost another or should I grab one like perk from one weapon and put it over to another I was pretty unsure about that another reason is that I would like to have three different elements with each weapon so that if I think a weapon is really cool I can dig into it I have the gravedigger a lot of hype about that why haven't I leveled it up I just really haven't needed it but I do have the resources to do it and at some point I definitely will it just really hasn't been a thing for me so far, so it's there at power level 20, but yeah, it's it's one of those things that I will get to 106, perhaps even 130, because it's a pretty iconic weapon that a lot of people would like me to craft for them, and I do like sharing when I have the time for it, so it's, it's on my to-do list just as my second Hydra that I'm gonna go Obsidian with, so that I have both a Shadow Shot tier and an Obsidian tier for it. Some of the roles I have on these power level 20 additional weapons that I just haven't had the time and resources to look into are pretty freaking awesome. Some of them I have a huge amount of like the rangers due to the many epic games <laughs> bugs lately that we have had in the event store are pretty decent. I love having weapons with like I have both energy and water element options on these. The razor blade is a weapon I'm pretty hyped about. I like how it fires. But again, I haven't leveled one up because I haven't needed like a substitute weapon for what I have going on in the high end yet. So, so far I've pretty much been focusing on trying out the new things in the game. And it has left a huge gap of low powered weapons in my, in my inventory that just kind of need some TLC before they can be really used. But they're there and they're not going anywhere until I like put them in the collection book or manually retire them. And... So it's like it's not hurting. I have 805 inventory spaces, so 
I've been pretty good at stashing up on these armory slots when we have had them in the event store, so I do have room to have them lying around right now. So I don't see a reason to like batch remove them, at least not until I see what we're going to be getting in relation to the perk reroll system to find out is it going to be like when we flux up heroes where we can do one per month or is it going to be something I can sit down and just dedicate an afternoon to optimizing all of my weapons. In the melee weapons I only really have two 106 weapons. I wanted to get some of these new scythes up and running as well because they are pretty amazing but again I played out the Harvester Sarah and she is really really fun and amazing but she didn't really feel as strong as what I wanted her to be and I know this is like may sound a little bit rude but I do have the dragons so if I'm gonna go all crazy pants in on a ninja I would rather try it out with the dragon first before going 130 with the new harvester even though she looks amazing and the weapon options for her are, are like super amazing as well. So yeah, melee weapons hasn't been that much of a thing for me. I have like these Fultzville Slugger 3000s, I have five of those, wow. I mean, why do I want five legendary baseball bats? I really don't, but again, if I, like if the perk reroll system is going to require me to take a thing from one weapon to put it onto another, which I don't think, but just in case I have them kept stashed up for, for usage with that, so it's gonna be a few weeks before we see it. Which also means that when I'm going to be doing my my 300 day status update or whenever I'm going to be doing it, I should have a completely different inventory because it will like I should be able to remove a lot of these duplicates and just focus on having one, two, or three of each that are really amazing instead of having a huge amount of strange mediocre weapons that I will probably never use. But right now they're they're here and. I'm also thinking in terms of if we get mythic weapons at some point or mythic transforms will I want to have more legendaries that I can feed into such a thing if they add it, which I really hope, but yeah, for now we don't, so it's just there. Traps, we don't have that many in the game compared to the other schematic types, so like the floor traps and the wall launcher here are like the three first traps I want 30 because they're cheap to craft. I have some semi-decent ceiling traps. I really like my ceiling traps, but again, I started out focusing on traps relatively early in the game, meaning that I have been leveling up and evolving some traps that don't really have ideal roles on them. So at some point, again, when experience allows it, or depending on how the perk reroll system works, I may focus on some completely different traps than what I have right now, but like if I can just reroll the ones I have, it is a ways to level up another like similar trap just because it has better rolls on it so I've been holding back on on my like leveling up of traps until I know what the perk reroll system is going to have to offer. If we do a little batch recycling in here then we can also again I have some locked stuff from events we can't really recycle and retire event related things but it is going to give you guys an idea about the amount of resources time and dedication that has been put into like getting this collection of yeah things in the game and I mean it's 6 million schematic experience points, 3000 pure drops of rain, 3.5. Uh, I mean it's not really that impressive a collection of schematics, I don't feel so. I feel like I should have had higher really, but when I look at the numbers like this, it's pretty decent, I feel, anyway, so so that's a nice way of looking at it. it. When you like do a batch collection, recycling kind of thing, it, it shows how much you actually put in there. These are my duplicate or unused survivors. I have some duplicate mythic leads that should go into the collection book, but because I still have one squad without a mythic lead, I'm keeping some of my mythic leads in case I want to replace the mythic lead survivors from the existing squads and really just change the personalities over to another squad as I may need because it's easier to change one hero than all of them. Defender is pretty junk stuff, I don't have that much but it's in there. And in terms of transforms all I really have at the time of this recording is for these legendary trap sch schematic transforms but I have all the traps so I'm not really in the need of doing that. My collection book is level 136. Again it's not something I've been putting that much uh, resource stuff and attention into because we don't have any really cool rewards around the corner. 
We do have some legendary transforms, even a legendary lead survivor transform, and those can actually become mythic from how I understand it, so I should focus on that, but we have had the Into the Storm event that also gave survivor transforms, and I did that a little bit before they broke that as well, so <laughs> I was trying to get my new survivors from completing that, but ever since they broke it, I haven't really been in there to check it out. So just going through my collection book, just step by step for those of you out there interested in what have I been putting in there. A general thing that I can say is that I don't really have any crystal weapons in there at all because it's really really expensive. You need to put something in there that is tier 4 or higher. And that is another thing that I have saved up my schematics for, it is when I catch up with the game at some point, which I haven't, it's really hard to manage to get all the new things all the time. But if at some point I catch up and I have excess experience points and evolution materials, I want to start putting some crystal weapons into my collection book so that I get that part sorted out as well, because it's almost half the collection book is putting in things that are full start in the crystals collection and I have duplicates to put in there for a lot of the things because the non-crystal categories of course I can level them up in here but I cannot evolve them to tier 4 here meaning that the amount of experience points for the collection book you can get for the normal ones you slot in before tier 4 is of course limited compared to what you can get for the ones you put into the crystal tier so again a lot of geeking about what can be done but it is going to require, I don't know, like 50 times as much evolution and hero experience points and schematic experience points as what I have used so far to fill up those categories. And since we don't have any cool rewards in the collection book, it's just one of those things where I right now put in duplicates in the non-crystal tiers. And if they put in really cool rewards at some points, I have the schematics and like stuff to put in here if I really need to boost it. And I'm really happy a lot of you guys are posting comments to my videos about what you have reached in the collection book so that I get some live current data about is there any cool reward at a given tier. So thank you guys very much for that. It means a lot to me that you are helping me by telling me whether or not you get something amazing like when you are further ahead in the game than I am so that I can focus my resources properly on things instead of just going like blindfolded into the craziness hoping to get something in in like when i can and when i have the time and resources for it i also like to do the pioneering kind of stuff i like to experiment try out new things but fortnite is one of those really easy to learn almost impossible to master games that have so many time gated things in it that it it's really really impossible if not just very very hard to max out everything without putting in a huge amount of time and money into it and even though I have like the high package of the game and I did buy V-Bucks once I haven't been investing a lot of money in it but I have been putting in a huge amount of time into the game and yeah what I'm I'm sharing here in this update video is like the result of hardcore playing it for 270 days with of course the top account that you could buy during the early access startup so it's not like I'm hey, I'm completely free to play I'm not but at the same time I'm not the type of player that has been going crazy buying llamas and buying V-Bucks all the time so I'm like I think a pretty mediocre kind of player where I have just spent a great deal of the money that I've spent on the game at the startup phase where I bought bought the highest account and then I haven't been buying that many V-Bucks and llamas because I discovered relatively early it wasn't the way for me to play the game. My research is capped, I have everything that I can get in the research uh, tiers, so there is nothing really here to show besides just it's a done thing and I cannot collect more research. In terms of my skill tree there are some... I don't have anything left I need besides this here, the backpack size, that is nice. And then like the stuff that is remaining is like supply drops, banner, Taylor Porters, Proximity Mines, Defenders, it's pretty much that throughout the tiers. Then we have some Defender slots that are locked because luckily at some point the developers realized this is a pretty junk thing for us to have in the skill tree and whereas they actually managed to remove the things related to weapon option, weapon usage options and they gave us 
storage options for that as like instead they haven't actually removed these defender slots which is really really weird because talk about a pretty unusable thing in the game i know that a lot of people enjoy having defenders that's not what i'm going at but the storm shield defender slots especially for the progression part of the game wow i would cry if i had put in my <laughs> my skill points for that now because you can't really use it moving forward in the game so it's just like uh, perhaps kind of help at the early part of the game my quest here i have my canny valley storm shield defense 10 and my twine peak 7 8 9 10 few daily missions some of the new challenges that i haven't like completed yet i'm close to being done with the toxic treasures so uh, so yeah that was pretty much my day 270 login status the things i have a little bit of a nudging about what does it sum up to when i try to batch recycle select the heroes and the schematics and yeah i think that was pretty much what i had to share in this video guys so i hope you enjoyed as always feel free to post things down there if you have questions or comments related to my account status i always love hearing from you guys so yeah, that was it. Woo. That was a bit of a long one, like 20 minutes or something. But regardless, that was what I had to share in this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you very much and very much for watching.